Welcome to Faith Works Live. Here's your host, Rebecca Haney. Hello and welcome to Faith Works Live. I'm so glad you're here. Rebecca Haney is my name and this is my absolute favorite thing to get to talk on the free airwaves in my marvelous home state of Iowa, um, wherever you're listening. Hello, but Iowa says hi. It's <laughs> not to say it's better where we are, but just we like it. We're nice people around here and it's our busy season because we're gearing up for caucus time, which means we're practically tripping over presidential candidates. But that's just that's just something that we kind of take one for the team here in Iowa. But one of the important um, issues that we're always we always care about on this show, but in particular when those folks come around, the men and women who want to be the leaders of the free world, we ask them about life and their stance on life, and that's on a lot of people's minds, kind of on the forefront. Really, you know, over the last year or two, this has been a political football. But around here on this show, we know it's far bigger than that. The issues of life, I say on this side of eternity, there's nothing more important to get right. And God's placed us here for such a time as this. I see the momentum that's happening in the wake of Roe v. Wade. But now there's a lot of, of questions that have been opened up and a lot of court cases that are embattled in our state as well as at the federal level. And one of those, um, which originated a case that originated in Texas has now gone before the Supreme Court and sent back to be adjudicated regarding um, one of the main abortion drugs. One of those pills that kill is uh, called mifeprestone, and that's uh, a, a a very damaging drug. I mean, you might imagine if it's an abortion drug, but it's often talked about in political terms. And I think it's very important to get some medical expertise and, and have a doctor actually weigh in on what this drug is, what it does, and some of the dangers that it poses to not only to children in the womb, but also to women as well. If this is framed as a women's health issue, well, what is really going on when a woman takes these abortive uh, abortive drugs? And uh, to that end, I am not a doctor, but a, a great one is gracing our show today. Dr. Ingrid Scop is with us. She is a, a certified OBGYN. She's, she's the subject matter expert here. She has delivered thousands of babies. Is it over 5,000, Ingrid? It is. I have oh, a, the best job. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, and and that means you are you are smart, you are tough, you are well informed, you're caring, you're like the total package, and you're on our radio show. So I'm so excited to, to that you could be with us today. Thank you. I'm so happy to be with you. And um, uh, it's such a topic that a lot of people are May, sometimes misled on. So I'm really happy to be here to just kind of tell you what's um, scientifically accurate about chemical abortions. Sure. Well, let's let's start there because the the majority now, as I understand it, the majority of abortions that are being performed in the United States are done so very early and they're done with this drug and drugs like it, right? It's a combination of, is it progesterone and mifeprestone? Yeah, actually, the, the two drugs that are approved by the FDA are mifepristone, which actually is an anti-progesterone. So it okay. blocks the um, hormonal su to support to the pregnancy, causes the embryo or fetus to die. And it's followed usually 24 hours later by mesoprostol, which induces contractions to expel the dead tissue. And that's something that we, you know, we don't hear a lot about the technical terms. What we usually hear is the political side of things. It becomes this this hotly contested issue because they are one side is committed to say, well, abortion is just a woman's right. And anything that threatens that, um, you know, has to be has to be shouted down. We can't even consider it. But from a medical perspective, you know, we always hear these should be decisions made between a woman and her doctor. Well, as a doctor, what it, what are some of your concerns and, and what are some of the things that you've seen about uh, what these drugs do to women's bodies? Yeah, so just to start out to address some of the incorrect euphemisms, of course, abortion is usually not between a woman and her doctor. Um, only about 7 to 14 percent, approximately one out of 10 obstetricians say they would do an abortion if their patient requested it. So in most cases, a woman leaves her obstetrician and goes to a specific abortion provider, which, of course, is sometimes not even a doctor. Um, some states allow uh, these to be nurse practitioners, physician assistants, other type of medical profession professionals, um, and they are just providing a service requested by the patient, which is 
um, performed medically, but it's not for a medical indication. Almost all of the abortions in our country are for social or financial um, reasons. Um, and so th that's a that's a problem right there. Unfortunately, even though I don't uh, uh, perform elective abortions, many times I'm called upon to care for women who have complications, particularly of these chemical abortions. Um, so that's probably a place to start. Um, you know, I mentioned how it's done. It doesn't always work. Many times it fails to express all the tissue. Um, good quality studies tell us that about five to 8% of the time, the women cannot have a complete abortion um, with the drugs alone and require surgery. Often that happens in emergent conditions. They present to emergency rooms with either brisk hemorrhage or I've cared for women that have bled for six, eight weeks every day before oh, no. they finally come in to get help. Um, unfortunately, the abortion industry tells them that it's safer than Tylenol, which of course sounds pretty safe. What they are not telling them is that they're actually comparing deaths that are reported after chemical abortion, which we know are often not detected. Mm -hmm. They're comparing those to deaths from Tylenol overdoses. There's about 600 every year in our country, which is very misleading. So the women, when they have a complication, they often don't go back to the abortion provider that they think has misled them because they have. Mm -hmm. They come to other doctors for their care. And so the studies that the abortion industry publishes are, are dramatically incomplete because they're only telling about the complications they know about. Well, and and that's a horrific example that that you just gave. And I can understand why women, if they've been lied to, now they don't know who to trust anymore. And we society basically lies about abortion for for women for generations now have said, well, this is safe. This is, you know, it's no big deal. It just makes your problem, quote unquote, just go away. And we just, you know, here, take these pills. And, you, and in Iowa, you can sometimes just have like a video call with a doctor and then they'll dispense the pills right there. And it does seem like it's no big deal. I don't know that anybody is informing these women of some of the risks that are there. They, they, they clearly are not because the women are surprised when they have complications. Um, they're not telling them that the average woman bleeds for two weeks and 8% are expected to bleed for more than a month, even when it works the way it's supposed to. They're not telling them that 40% of women surveyed describe the pain as severe. Essentially, they're going into labor to uh, express the tissue. And they're also not telling them that even when it's used the way the FDA has approved it up to 10 weeks gestation, that many women will look in their toilet and they will see their child because a 10 week fetus um, mm -hmm. is about the size and appearance of a gummy bear. He's clearly identifiable as a human being. So women are not expecting that. They're crushed when they see it. They're they ask themselves, do I bury this child? I mean, they they don't know what to do. And unfortunately, I think many women and women have told me this. They don't want to talk about it. They just want the experience to be over. And right. if you ask them, many times they will say, well, Dr. Scott, I, I think this is maybe what I deserve for making the decision I did. They're ashamed. They just they just want it to be behind them. Um, so it's it's unfortunate. Um the uh, probably a lot of your listeners are aware that there is a um, uh, a, a, a lawsuit making its way through the courts that is a um, against it's the Alliance for Hippocratic Medicine versus the FDA and the allegation is that the FDA broke its own rules over and over again in order to approve the chemical abortions and then to loosen the restrictions. So they've treated this pill differently than they treat any of the other drugs that they um, have approved. Um, when they approved it, they actually did it under a special category, accelerated approval regulations, which is designed for drugs that treat life-threatening illnesses for which there is no other treatment. Well, pre pregnancy, of course, is almost never a life-threatening illness. Mm -hmm. And at the time that they approved it, surgical abortions were widely available. Um, in the 1990s, there were over a million every year. So they, they did that. They did not perform studies in pediatric population, even though their own rules require them to do so. And then over time, in 2016, they loosened restrictions. 
extending the use up to 10 weeks gestational age from seven weeks, even though they knew that there were more complications in the higher gestational ages. They said it no longer needed to be a physician who prescribed it, even though, of course, only the physician is going to be able to do the surgery that is required when it doesn't work. Uh, the FDA at that time said they did not want to hear about any complications unless it killed the woman. Wow. <laughs> so, um, and then unfortunately it got even worse. Um, in 2021, using the COVID pandemic as an excuse, the FDA took away the requirement for in-person supervision. That means that they did not require an ultrasound, even though of course an ultrasound would tell us accurately the gestational age. Um, we know that if women underestimate their gestational age um, uh, and, and consume these pills in the second trimester, that about 38% of the time, four out of 10 women will require surgery. Um, an ultrasound also is crucial to make sure that there is not an ectopic pregnancy in the fallopian tube because these pills do not work to resolve an ectopic pregnancy. And there have been women who have died thinking they were undergoing an abortion when in fact they had an ectopic that had not been diagnosed. Um, they don't require labs. Um, so it's been, always been the standard of care to provide a shot called Rogam to a woman who's RH negative if she has mm -hmm. an abortion in the first trimester to prevent future pregnancy complications. Um, these changes that the FDA made um, allow them not just to be performed by telemedicine, but also to be ordered over the internet and delivered through the mail without any medical supervision. So it, you can see it's just getting more and more dangerous. And so these are all the things that the um, physicians in this lawsuit have said, this is inappropriate. There's mm -hmm. no other drug that gets this kind of treatment. It's very right. dangerous for women. We know that compared to a surgical abortion, uh, study after study has shown at least four times as many complications from a chemical abortion. Um, a very wow. high quality study in Finland that did records linkage. So it, it knew every abortion that occurred in the country. And then it subsequently linked to all of the medical events. This study, 42,000 abortions, by the way, very large study at less than seven weeks gestation documented that one out of five women had a complication. 15% had hemorrhage, 6% required surgery, and 2% um, had a significant infection. So they documented a lot of complications. But, you know, the FDA didn't look at high quality studies like that. They looked at the low quality studies performed by the abortion industry that usually had between 15 and 35% of women lost to follow up. So those researchers would assume those were uncomplicated abortions. But, you know, as I mentioned, it's probably more likely that those were complicated. Those were women mm. who did not want to go back to the abortion provider, instead go to other doctors um, for their care. Um, additionally, in the emergency room, um, another records linkage study demonstrated that 5% of women showed up with a complication um, related to the chemical abortion to an emergency room within a month. Unfortunately, 60% of the time, those ladies' um, complications were miscoded as having been due to a miscarriage. So mm -hmm. it, it shows again how you cannot trust the American data because nothing is mandatory in our country. And so all of the complications that are reported are just voluntarily reported. Um, and then many times the women don't confess that it was a, comp a, a, a chemical abortion that caused them to come there. Um, so the doctors may assume that it was a miscarriage instead. And so that just leads to more data deficiencies. Mm. Dr. Ingrid Scott is our special guest. She is a subject matter expert on these abortion drugs. And uh, well, I shouldn't say it that way. She has the wonderful privilege of guiding women through pregnancy and delivering babies, thousands of, of wonderful new lives, little boys and girls into the world. Uh, she's probably one of the very first faces that they see, which is amazing. And that's a gift. Um, but she also knows about um, what the harm uh, that abortion drugs do to women and to their children as well. And so that's why we're focusing on this today, because we don't talk about this nearly enough. Um, I think if people, yet again, women deserve the truth about their bodies. Women deserve the truth. And, and we talk about 
um, making these decisions, that it's supposed to be a woman's decision. Um, and as you mentioned, there's usually a lot more people involved than just the doctor, um, Ingrid. But at the same time, if we're not giving women the truth, if we're not giving the full information, how on earth can we claim that they're making informed decisions? And women deserve better than that. Even if you're listening to this and you're like, eh, not sure what your pro-lifers are all about. Um, we all should be on the side of informing women and giving them the full story and all the, the, the truth about side effects, about um, what these drugs can do, and not just assume they're safe. It sounds more and more like this is uh, this is being done only for political reasons, for a specific pro-abortion agenda. Um, but I'm not going to put words in uh, Dr. Scoff's mouth. What we're going to do is take a, a little break. We'll uh, hear from some of our partners. And when we come back, Let's talk more about the real story about what these drugs are doing and what the attempt to maybe regulate some of this, maybe what some of these, the case that has gone before the Supreme Court and is now being uh, sent back, as I understand it, to the lower courts to continue um, the this um, fight to help make uh, these drugs, basically to take some of these drugs off, the one particular drug off the table, and what impact that could have on the future of abortion in our country. You're listening to Faith Works Live. Excuse me, Mr. Jenkins. Yes, Bob. This bonus you're asking me to give Larry is totally unfair. How so? Well, he worked with Kurt on that sale, and Kurt did 80% of the work. It's not right to give Larry 100% of the bonus. In life, some things just don't seem fair. Bob, I've made my decision. But boss, Kurt worked nights and weekends for months. I've never seen anyone work harder. He deserves at least half the bonus. Ever notice that what seems unfair at first seems fair with just a little more information? Giving Larry the entire bonus makes no sense. Look, Kurt attempted to bribe the customer. If it weren't for Larry's integrity and the customer's trust in his character, we would have had a major lawsuit on our hands. Oh. Give the bonus to Larry and tell Kurt he's lucky to have a job. Any more questions? I'm good. God has infinitely more information than we do. The next time you're tempted to think God is being unfair, remember, you may need just a little more information to see God's wisdom. Another message from Lifeline Productions, located on the web at lifelinepro.com. You know how much we love Animus beef at the Haney House. It is delicious. It's wonderful quality. It's naturally raised with no steroids, antibiotics, and they just do what they do so well. High quality beef at the Animus Farm. But did you know you can actually see where your beef comes from? You can visit Animus Farm. The fine folks, Dave and Mary Lynn, are the most hospitable folks I may have ever met. They'll let you feed a bottle calf and then meet the cows at Animus Farm. And opening soon is a special treat, Mulberry Cottage, uh, for a stay at the Animus Farm. It's a family-oriented getaway, and they'll let you hike the trails out there. You can forage or bird watch or just enjoy the beautiful sunset from their porch. I'm very excited to check it out myself. And they'll even let you do a cookout with Animus Beef. Order your beef or your next vacation at AnimusBeef.com. That's O-H-N-E-M-U-S Beef.com. I told you you were speeding. Don't worry. I got pulled over by this guy last month, and I pleaded with him not to give me a ticket, and he gave me a warning. Good afternoon. Oh, Mr. Smith, speeding again. Uh, hi, officer. I, yeah, I know. I promise I'll never do it again. Okay? I can't believe this. Shh. Please sign here. You're giving me a ticket? You were speeding, sir. That's not fair. You gave me a warning last time. Oh, I see. You want justice. Um. So, to be fair, I'll not only give you a ticket for speeding today, I'll also give you the ticket you deserved last month. Do you continue to live sinfully because you expect God to have mercy? Well, the Bible says conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. God expects us to live holy lives. His grace is amazing. Don't take it for granted. Show your gratitude with obedience. Another message from Lifeline Productions, the comic strip of radio at lifelinepro.com. 
There's no better time than now to stand for life. And you can stand with Iowa's original pro-life organization, Pulse for Life. They're the longest standing nonprofit pro-life organization in Iowa, and they're dedicated to informing, educating, and inspiring a new generation to value the sanctity of all human life from fertilization until natural death. They serve at the state house. They educate in classrooms at events. They proudly serve on the coalition of pro-life leaders. They are on the front line lines of the battle against this throwaway culture of death that we see all around us, and we are winning ground. Hearts and minds are changing, and the pro-life movement is continuing to grow. And you can be a part of the exciting things that are happening right here in our own backyard at pulseforlife.org and get your finger on the pro-life pulse. Sign up for their newsletter, find ways that you can make a difference, and how you can change hearts and minds with their pro-life apologetics course, Pulse for life.org. I'm glad you're here. Faith Works Live is the name of the show. Rebecca Haney is my name, but you know that because we're friends already. And Dr. Scoff is our special guest, Dr. Ingrid Scoff. Um, she is an OBGYN. She is great at her job because she's uh, had over 5,000 deliveries. Um, and so that's an awful lot of thank you cards, I would think, that need to come your way. I know we have Mother's Day, Father's Day. I don't know if we have a doctor's, uh, like an OBGYN day, but uh, we probably should. I, I would advocate for that. I think you should get all the thank you cards and all the chocolates. That would be great. But just seeing those babies and seeing the pleasure on the parents' faces is enough for me. Having been through it a few times now. So we have six kids in our household um, and we've had some complications along the way. Um, we had a child that was delivered uh, quite prematurely. And so he's um, he we had a journey through the NICU and and he's awaiting us in heaven now. Um, so we've had our, our share of uh, like through the process, there's an awful lot of heartbreak along the way, but through the process, you see some of the best, the most caring, the most qualified doctors and nurses. And just um, so we're big supporters uh, of our um, hospitals here in, in our state. And, um, and, and our family thanks you and doctors like you for caring enough to serve women and babies. Um, but there's also an awful lot of people who purport to be medical experts that say that abortion is no big deal, that it's a normal medical procedure, um, that we shouldn't be really having any concern whatsoever. And I think more and more um, abortion drugs are necessary to focus on because that's where the majority of the abortions are are taking that's the method by which the majority of abortions are are being completed um and aside from the ethical and moral component of this which is it's wrong always to uh kill an unborn child to, to take innocent life is always wrong um but it's also very harmful to the women who are who are undergoing this, who believe it's just normal medicine and don't receive appropriate information. They aren't warned about the side effects. And if anybody's seen the movie Unplanned, I mean, that I think gave a pretty um, gruesome but eye opening picture. Um, I'm I'm not sure if you've seen it, but if you have, I I'm wondering if you think it's pretty accurate or not. Yeah, I think absolutely. Uh, the the depiction of, of her lying on the floor in her bathroom in pain with blood everywhere is a very common situation. Um, I had lunch with a friend the other day and she was telling me how at a college campus, um, one of her friends d realized that there was a woman in the restroom for hours with blood on the floor and her boyfriend was in there with her and she the friend didn't know what could be happening, called it called an ambulance because she thought this girl was in distress. And it turned out exactly as we might expect. She was undergoing a chemical abortion. And that was how it presented it just such a horrible situation on the college campus in that case. Um, but again, many women in their bathroom. And unfortunately, these drugs are being promoted to college age girls. So it has been said that the college dorm bathroom is the new abortion clinic. Oh. And that is certainly the case. Um, this is one of the, I love my job. I love my patients. Of course, I love the unborn child and I want to advocate for him. 
But in addition, I do the work I do because I have seen so many women harmed by abortion. Many times they're in crisis, they don't know what to do, and they fall into this action. They get on their phones, they look online, it looks quick and easy. They're never told the other options, right? So if they find that chemical abortion clinic that wants to mail them the drugs in the mail, they're not getting told that, in fact, there are 2,700 crisis pregnancy centers in our country, and they exist just to meet women in their crisis, to let them know there are other options. Mm -hmm. There is, in general, quite a bit of uh, material support, emotional support. I think most women, if they're, if the father of that baby came alongside them and said, you know what, maybe the timing's bad, maybe we don't have a lot of money, but let's have this baby. I think the vast majority of those women would readily welcome their child. And so, so many of these crisis pregnancy centers want to do that. They want to come alongside women. But addition, additionally, even if those women come into a crisis pregnancy center and decide to have an abortion after all, those centers are there for them when all is said and done and when they're mm. hurting after the abortion. And so many women regret their abortions. So many women have physical, emotional, even mental health complications afterwards. Mm -hmm. And so there are people that'll come along and help them um, even, even after it's been done. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you, the, I think the, it's important to point out that these chemical abortions are promoted to women for reasons that benefit the abortion industry. Clearly for the woman, it's a very bad experience and highly likely to result in complications. But the abortion industry has pivoted to chemical abortions for two reasons. One is that they have trouble finding doctors willing to do surgical abortions. So even though, unfortunately, many of my peers will say I'm pro-choice, I think women should have this, this you know, option, they don't want to get down and do the dirty work to perform the surgical abortion. So I think that that's, you know, unfortunate that they aren't willing to put their money where their mouth is if they think this is something that women need. I, on the other hand, don't think that there's a any evidence that there's a medical benefit for women from an abortion. It's a medical procedure that treats societal problems. And we could argue it doesn't even actually treat those problems. It may help a woman out of her immediate distress. But, mm -hmm. you know, one thing that we recognize is Prior to Roe, only about 11% of women were having their babies out of wedlock. Today, it's 40%. And in some very high-risk population, it's close to 70%. So all these readily available abortions clearly are helping men avoid fatherhood. But unfortunately, when women want to have the, when they want to give birth to their child, many times it leaves them alone as a single mother living in poverty and all of the problems that go alongside that. Yeah, it's had, you know, a disastrous uh, societal effects. This has not been good for for anyone that's involved. But as you said, I mean, the abortion industry is profiting from it. So why wouldn't they just keep promoting it? And that's the the ugly truth, right, is that the the abortion industry knows this and they're claiming that it's they're they're there because they care for women. And oftentimes they'll have those those titles in their names that this is the center for women, center for reproductive health. And it's the farthest thing from it. And they know they know that there's these that there are these dangers, but they are not warning women. They're not preparing them because, I mean, I don't see any other reason than it impacts the bottom line and it impacts their agenda, their their continued existence. Um, and as you mentioned, there are there is this push toward abortion drugs. I would say, I mean, maybe you can weigh in on this as well because it is less. It seems to be less regulated. It seems like there's less work that goes into it um, and they can just mass produce these pills and throw them at women and say, here, here you go. No problem. Um, and and it might also be I, I've noticed the legislative efforts on the other side to say when there's a detectable heartbeat, for example, in Texas and also here in Iowa, although the law wasn't allowed to take effect here in Iowa, it's being um, it's being revisited in the Supreme Court as we speak, basically. Um, so we're praying about that outcome. Um, but there is a so-called heartbeat 
uh, um, restriction that says once there's a detectable heartbeat, um, abortions cannot be performed. And so the pro-abortion side is saying, well, we need to get these pills out into the hands of women because this is for early pregnancy. And we need to be able to sometimes fudge those lines, apparently, so that we, uh, you know, maybe there is a heartbeat, but we're not looking too hard to find it. And so obviously we can't trust the people who make their money by extinguishing that life to tell us whether or not they're allowed to do that thing that they want in order to make their money. Um, so I guess all of that being said, have you recognized some of the changes um, that have taken place? I, I'm hearing that is that there are fewer abortions that are taking place overall because of some of these legislative efforts. But again, the push towards this pill is huge from the pro-abortion side. And I'm very concerned that there are women who are going to go through this, the type of side effects, more and more of them, because there's this kind of like haste under the cover of night covert attempt to just like shove these abortion drugs at women. And they're doing even less to warn them. Yeah, I think there's there's really twofold things that are going on in the states that have been allowed by the courts to protect unborn life. Um, again, I'm in Texas, so I've seen it. So we know that that women are encountering that barrier and they are revisiting what they feel about their child. And in many cases, they're carrying those babies to term. They're learning to love them. That's a beautiful that's a beautiful thing that's happening. Amen. But on the other hand, um, the, the chemical abortions were promoted for just such a time as this to provide abortions in states that are trying to protect that life. So I am still seeing women having chemical abortion complications in Texas, even though we've been protecting life for about a year and a half now, because people are bringing them into the states. We're having trouble preventing them being mailed in. Um, they're being brought across the Mexican border. They're being brought in from New Mexico. And in fact, some women are going out of the state to have abortions. And rather than being given an abortion, a surgical abortion there, they're being given these pills to go back into the state to have their complications in the state. So unfortunately, um, that is happening. Mm. Well, I know you've you've had this experience, all of these experiences yourself. You've also done a lot of research with the Charlotte Lozier Institute, which we love around here. Um, and the, I wonder if it's a lack of knowledge about the data or if it's a willful blindness to some of the data. I mean, you're trying to to put these facts out there for people to know and understand. And I I believe that if most women are given the full picture, then they will choose life. I truly believe that. Um, but at the same time, I think there's a lot of effort to keep a almost censor, essentially, to censor this type of information. They don't want the truth to be known, again, because that, you know, people might wake up to the damage that abortion is doing and has done to our society for over the last 50 years. Um, so are you able to disseminate some of this info? Obviously, we're we've got you've got a microphone anytime on our show, but are you able to get some of that word out um, to yeah. folks? Yeah, we're trying very hard. I mean, you're right. I not just willful blindness, not just misinformation by the abortion industry, but active media advocacy to try to keep the American people from understanding what's going on. So we're, we're fighting against all of that. Of course, I'm doing lots of interviews and we'll talk to anybody who, who wants to talk about this issue, you know, and I appreciate that. But of course, many of that, much of that is conservative sources, but that's okay. You know, so your listeners can hear what I'm saying and say, I didn't know that. They can come to Charlotte Lozier, LozierInstitute.org and find information and they can educate their friends. So, you know, we're going to, we're going to get past this. The, the information is going to eventually come to, you know, women and um, the American public. And I, I really do trust the American public that once they really know that abortion doesn't help women, it's hurting them socially, it's hurting them far more often physically and with mental health complications than they're being told. Once they recognize, okay, we're ending human life and we're saying we're doing it to benefit women, but it's actually not benefiting the women, then, then perhaps we can look at the fact that we are ending human life for, for financial and social reasons. Um, and, and it's not even reaching the, um, uh, the goals that we're ending the life for, um, so I think that, you know, more and more we're going to we're going to get the truth out. This Alliance for Hippocratic Medicine case, I think, is is crucial because, you know, of course, the media is trying to spin it as, oh, this is just one lone judge, you know, doing something inappropriate. 
No, it's about the FDA has broken its own rules. The FDA is not protecting American women from dangerous drugs. That is their only job is to protect mm-hmm. people from dangerous drugs. And so I think as more and more people point or you know realize this case is going on, hopefully more and more people will read the, our amicus briefs and will will do the research themselves and say, wait, I didn't know that that was happening. Um, you know, a couple other things I wanted to mention, you're in Iowa. Please do. And one of the things that has happened is that the abortion or the FDA actually has pointed at studies that did one thing and then they've allowed protocols that do something completely different. And there was a big tele-abortion study in Iowa and the but nonetheless, they used in-person sonograms, in-person labs, in-person evaluations. The only difference was that they then gave the woman the abortion pills remotely, like she mm-hmm. went to a different clinic to get the pills. But of course, we can recognize, well, that wouldn't have made a difference as long as you had the testing. And right. yet they then allowed this protocol that doesn't require the testing. So it just kind of shows the bait and switch that's been going on. Definitely. And um, so I am very hopeful. I think, I mean, the Supreme Court decided not to do anything other than return the case to the Fifth Circuit for the trial. But I'm very hopeful as the data comes out in the trial that the Fifth Circuit will will realize, as they already um, tried to do, these these this remote distribution without any testing is very dangerous. I think they're going to back that up. I think they're going to say, no, this is not mm-hmm. appropriate. And I hope that they back it all the way up. If they allow mifepristone to be used at all, I hope they back it all the way up to the initial um, indications, which required a doctor and mm-hmm. which required mandatory complication reporting. You know, if we're going to do it, we need to tightly supervise it. But like I said, even under those initial conditions, it still had four times the complication of surgical abortion. Um, If it does get restricted, it's going to be interesting to see what the abortion industry does. They could return to surgical abortion, which is a safer procedure. If they do that, then it shows they at least care about the safety for women. Mm -hmm. But they've already started to tell us that what they're going to do instead is try to promote the second component of the chemical abortion regimen, which is mesoprostol, because mesoprostol is more readily available. It's used for other indications, ulcers, legitimate obstetric uses like postpartum hemorrhage and labor induction. So it it can be obtained more readily, but a large meta-analysis demonstrated that 22% of the time, nearly one out of four women could not express all the tissue. They could not have a complete abortion with mesoprostol alone and they needed surgery. Hmm. So if we see the abortion industry start pointing to mesoprostol alone, then we have, we, we need to ask no more questions. We have definitive evidence at that point. They do not care about women. They do not care about safety. All they care about is ending unborn human life. Right. Uh, That's, and I'm, I'm, concerned that that's the direction things are going to go. I'm going to continue to pray that hopefully we can at least come to some sort of consensus about uh, women's care and women's health. If we can all agree that we have these shared motivations and the motivations are honest and true, then maybe we can come to some sort of consensus in the country about protecting women. Yes, we care about women and our health. We care about babies and health. Maybe we could start coming together around that. But if it's, if it's just what my cynical side says, which is it's just about the the blood money, basically, and it's about promoting abortion at all costs. And for some, that's exactly what the situation is. Then, I mean, that's going to be the end. The wolf will take off the sheep's clothing, as you said. So we'll be able to see once and for all um, where where the chips fall in this legal case. Um, Dr. Ingrid Skop is our expert guest. We're very excited to have her on the show. She's uh, detailing the horrors of the abortion drugs, basically, um, and why uh, this is uh, this is not how God designed <laughs> our bodies to work. This is not good for us. It's not medicine. It's not health care. And we just need to be honest about all of this. 
this at this point. Um, and some of the court cases that are proceeding, in particular this one in Texas, now we're not sure exactly what this decision will be, but we're watching it very closely. Um, and I know that we can have convers the one of the good things about this is that we can have conversations about it. Um, with maybe, you know, might have been fairly awkward before, but now it's happening in the news. We can talk about it and and uh just at least start changing, hopefully changing hearts and minds on these discussions. Uh, Dr. Scott, for non-medical lay people out here in the cheap seats, what are some informed points that we can bring up uh, with our friends, neighbors, um, co-workers, church mem- fellow church members, um, anything, uh, the folks we come in contact with, what are some ways that we can be informed on this particular topic so that we can maybe start having some of those heart-changing discussions? What are some things that we could bring up? Yeah, thank you. So, you know, again, at LozierInstitute.org, we have an entire multiple uh, pages devoted to, it's called abortiondrugfacts.com. So they can get a lot of information there. But just in general, I would say that with surgical abortion, one out of 100 women will have a a complication requiring surgery. With chemical abortion, at least one out of 20 will. Mm -hmm. And with mesoprostol abortion, if that is, is what the abortion industry chooses to do, approximately one out of four will have a complication requiring surgery. So just to show how exponentially, you know, it it gets worse. Um, uh, uh, More data is that um, a recent study that we have featured on our website demonstrated that 60% of women who have abortion uh, uh, underwent some kind of coercion. So just, you know, to make that even for people who are pro-choice, it's not always the woman's choice. Many times she feels she has no choice because her male partner, perhaps her parents, even her job. I mean, there, there's coercion coming from so many different directions um, that is causing you know women to, to make a choice that they might not make if they were allowed on their own to know all of the options and to know all of the support that was available. Mm. No, that's a great point. And I think it's it's important not to get stuck in the talking points. The part of the reason that we um, maybe avoid some of these discussions is because it seems like it has to turn into some sort of political debate or angry arguments. And there is passion, obviously, on yeah. on all sides. But to hear somebody's story as to why they think what they do. Um, and, and so many of us have been impacted personally by um, whether it's pregnancy, loss, um, abortion, and women that regret their abortions or have that as a part of their story. We just talked last week with our friend Laura Lemix, who does Restored by Grace Ministries, and that is that is their focus, is bringing redemption and healing um, to, to post-abortive women through God's Word. Um, which we are fully support here on the show. Embrace by Grace or Embrace Grace is another wonderful ministry that comes around uh, single moms, single women, uh, or un- unplanned pregnancies essentially, and helps them to see how they are um, created beautifully in the image of God and how they can um, re uh, basically reunite with an understanding of who He is and His plan for them. So there's a lot of practical ways that we can support life, but I think we have to be informed on this and we have to be guided by our passion toward the people that we're talking to um, and to love them enough to tell them the truth, to warn them, as I don't believe women are are being warned about this. They assume the FDA approved it. It comes from a doctor. It's safe. But they just assume. And we're popping so many pills these days in the United States, sadly. I mean, we're not looking at good health as much as we are just looking to a pill to fix the problem. And that I'm sure, you know, you could speak to that mm-hmm. with <laughs> far more uh, expertise than I can. But that's a huge issue anyway. And to lie to women and tell them that this is safe, to give it the veneer of respectability and and to call it healthcare, it's the farthest thing from Um, And hopefully we can be led by that into earnest discussions with our friends and neighbors to say, you know, this isn't good. This is not safe. And if we care about women's health, we should do better. We should, women deserve better than this. So that would be my approach. I don't know. What do you think? No, I think that's a very good approach, you know, that, and that has the approach I've taken, you know, initially I wanted to advocate for the, for the unborn fetus, but I've discovered that there are people who will acknowledge, yeah, of course it's a living human being, but he doesn't have the value the mother does. And if the mother desires it, he, he, his life can be ended. Mm -hmm. But I think if you can make the argument, okay, you're saying that because you think you're going to benefit the mom, but if you can prove that 
you know, actually that, that doesn't benefit her, you know, right. um, then hopefully people will start coming around and saying, well, then why are we ending unborn life if, uh, if, if it's to no benefit? And exactly. Exactly. Dr. Ingrid Scott has been our expert guest today. It's been our pleasure to have you with us. Um, one little thought that that came into my mind just now. So I know we've only got a few minutes left, but I had a conversation with a lady who called into the radio show and she was just torn up, just completely devastated by um, a, a situation where she had had a miscarriage. Um, but when she got her, her bills, the paperwork from the hospital, they coded it as an abortion and she was feeling shame and guilt over this saying, this was not my intention. I, I didn't intend to have an abortion, but the hospital is saying that I did and they're calling it that. And I don't understand kind of how to process. She was struggling with how to process that. And, and I've seen that as part of a larger effort, not maybe not her situation exactly, but there's been this larger effort to confuse these terms about miscarriage and abortion. And you've got women who have lost a pregnancy that are now pro-choice and they say, well, you know, clearly this was just, it's just an abortion. And they're they're conflating these two terms Mm -hmm. along with a lot of other healthcare conflation um, saying that abortion has to remain legal. Otherwise women won't get the care they need for ectopic pregnancy, for example. And I just wondered if you might be able to speak to some of that um, from your medical perspective. I just, my heart broke when I heard her story about that. Yeah. And, and I think what might've happened with her specifically is that, um, in medical terminology, abortion is a very neutral term, which means pregnancy loss in the first half of pregnancy. Hmm. So if, if she has a natural loss, the, the medical term is spontaneous abortion. So she may okay. not have noticed that that was that full terminology was there. But I think that's probably how they coded it, as opposed to induced abortion, which is when you take an action okay. to end that life compared to the life that uh, ended through natural processes. But you're absolutely right, because 97% of the abortions in our country are for financial, social, other undefined reasons. But in order to try to keep those legal, the abortion industry is pointing at the really hard cases, you know, the women who do need to be separated from their child to protect their life. Um, in my opinion, it's it's absolutely dishonest that they're pointing at, at miscarriages and ectopic pregnancies. I mean, ectopic pregnancy, we all know, is a life-threatening condition. It cannot progress to a live baby. It accounts for about 10% of all maternal mortality. So every doctor, no matter how pro-life they are, when they diagnose an ectopic pregnancy, they treat it immediately, end of story. So that one really shouldn't be confusing. Um miscarriages, again, the the treatments that we give, the suction aspiration, surgical procedure, um, we can use mesoprostol. Most OBGYNs don't have access to mifepristone, the chemical abortion drug, because you have to be a certified prescriber. You have to have intended in advance that you want to be an abortion provider. And again, most of us don't do abortions. But the point is, You can use the same uh, procedures and medicines to treat a pregnancy that has ended versus one that you are intending to end. Hmm. But to conflate the two and to indicate to women who've lost a pregnancy that they desired that they had an abortion is not only dishonest, it's terribly hurtful for women. And, And we've seen Hollywood actresses that have been misled and maybe they needed to be set. A very common situation is when the rupture, the the membranes have ruptured before the baby can survive. Hmm. The mother can get infected and she can die. This is a life-threatening condition for many women. There should be no question about whether that can be treated, but the intent is not to end that life. The intent is to protect the mother. Mm -hmm. And yet those women have been convinced that they too have had abortions, which is so sad because it's it's tragic and they've lost a child that they love. And You know, it's for to use these women as pawns in order to keep these these purely elective abortions available is really, really dishonest. It is. And it's it's um, hurtful to any woman that's gone through that grief. It's it's basically co-opting. As I see it, it's co-opting grief from a mother's loss of her dearly beloved child to further a pro-abortion and a destructive, a purely destructive agenda. And 
I want to, that's why I'm so passionate about getting the truth out there for, for everybody, but in particular for women to understand, um, not only how God made us and how he made our bodies to work and why life is good and why life is beautiful, but also that uh, they deserve truth and good quality care. And you're not going to get that from someone whose end goal is to get your money to kill your baby. I mean, that's just as bluntly as I can put it. We cannot trust. I can't trust that I'm going to get the truth and accurate information with that. We need to be giving women all of the info and not just shove pills in their face that can cause them serious issues, not to mention, and the life of their child before they, especially before they've had the opportunity to seriously and, you know, um, consider that in the broad context, the, the consequences of those types of decisions. One thing that I saw that, that, uh, was encouraging was a survey that cited about 96% of women who were seeking abortion, but I think they call it the turnaway study because the, the women weren't a, they claim we're not able to access the abortion procedures that they wanted, the abortion drugs. Mm-hmm. Um, but 96% of them are very happy with their children. And like, yeah. I, and maybe they caught the other 4% on a bad day. <laughs> the <laughs> dollars had a temper tantrum or something. But um, just to, to know that life is beautiful and babies are worth it. And it can be very, very difficult. And it's not a choice that you just make once and forget about it. You choose life every single day. Um, and we can support you. We, we love people enough to say, yes, we care about you and we're willing to come alongside you and whatever you need, we can help. We can be there for you. If women know they have that level of support, I think the, they will be empowered to choose life. So that's where we're going. That's our approach around here. And uh, Dr. Scott, I'm so glad to have you on the show. Thank you so much, um, for using your voice to advocate for life, not to mention your skills um, as an OBGYN. And uh, we we need more folks like you on the front lines. I know it's it's got to be difficult. So um, bless you and uh, continue to stand strong. And uh, we'd, we'd love to have you back anytime. Thanks for joining us. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Rebecca. It's been a pleasure. And please, I'd love to come back. Uh, doc, well, I'll hold you to that now. Dr. Ingrid Scott, <laughs> next time you're in town, we'll make you cookies. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's my uh, mom bribery is <laughs> cookies of your choice although she's a doctor so she probably likes healthy stuff I don't know what's do you have a favorite dessert oh I don't know you know I've never been to Iowa so I'll have to come up and visit you sometime I'm from Oklahoma originally so I think maybe you know I always think the Iowans probably think like the Oklahoma oh yeah just, we got common cooking. sense in bunches we just have a little more snow <laughs> We have, <laughs> we have too much snow. We can't make up our minds around here what season it is. We have summer one day and then winter the next. That's so. been a weird spring. Yes, it it <laughs> definitely has. But it's been a joy to talk with you. And uh, God bless you and your work. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Rebecca. Good luck to you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Um, until next time, you've been listening to Faith Works Live. Uh, we have a mission, so let's be about it. When a woman faces an unplanned pregnancy, every possible emotion goes through her head. Where can she go for help and for hope? She can go to Inner Visions. Here in our metro, we have two healthcare clinics where she will find hope and help. From free pregnancy testing and STD testing to free ultrasounds, Inner Vision serves women and men with STDs who find themselves in vulnerable situations. They're completely free of charge because of generous donations from folks like you. And their medical clinics help their patients get all the information that they deserve that empowers them to make life-affirming decisions. That's what they do at InterVisions Healthcare Clinics right here in Des Moines. Learn more at intervisionshealthcare.org. That's intervisionshealthcare.org. And you can call 24 hours a day at 515-440-CARE. That's 515-440-2273. Okay, where do we turn? According to the directions, it's the next intersection. As we travel through life, it's always helpful to have directions. Is that a big mud hole? Ew, and I just had that car washed. Why don't you turn at the next intersection? But the directions said turn here. And we'll find our way to the right road. Faithfully following the directions will lead us to our destination. This can't be right. The directions say to go straight, but we're almost out of 
town. Well, this turn looks good to me. All right, let's take it. Weren't we supposed to turn at a gas station somewhere? Oh, that was way back there. It looked like a rough neighborhood, so I skipped that turn. Oh, good call. God has given us directions in the Bible that will lead us to a relationship with Him and a home in heaven. These directions can't be right. I haven't trusted them from the beginning. Maybe we should have. Then we wouldn't be lost. We're not lost. If the Bible seems irrelevant or outdated to you, you may have drifted further from God than you think. Okay, we're lost. What do the directions say? Another message from Lifeline Productions, the comic strip of radio at lifelinepro.com. In today's world, security has never been more vital. And at FaithWorks Live, we're proud to partner with Veriguard Security. It's a professional physical security service, and they're really raising the bar in security and private investigations. Whether you need a team of professional officers to protect what you have worked hard to build, or their mobile security units for multiple properties or large locations, from business or corporate properties to your home or neighborhood. Perhaps you've got an event coming up they secure quality security coverage for events large and small because it's about peace of mind and protecting you, your family, your team, and your property. Settle for nothing less than the best when it comes to your security. You shouldn't have to compromise. When it comes to security, you can trust Veriguard. Contact them today at veriguard.us. That's V-A-R-A guard.us. For security service, you can trust Veragard. Well, Marcy, for tonight, I'd like to rent Casablanca, Citizen Kane, and uh, this one. Okay, these three videos. Yeah. Uh, could you put them in a bag for me? Hey, Frank. Oh, uh, Pastor, uh, fancy meeting you here. Oh, Frank, we have a special on this third movie you're renting, the one entitled... That's okay, that's okay. Hey, thanks for helping at church last Sunday. Sure. Uh, well, I gotta go. Oh, Frank, you have a late charge on your last movie. Um, it was... I'll pay it. I've got the title right here. No, I'm sure you're right. I'll pay it. So, family video night tonight. Uh, ha uh-huh. ha. Here's your videos. Enjoy. You forgot the bag. Oh, those are your videos. Yeah, well, uh, these two. Uh, this one's for a friend. Oh, I see. Well, a, a friend of mine's in it. I-, I told him I'd watch it. That movie? Well, oh, wait. This isn't Bambi. <laughs> I must have grabbed the wrong movie. Jesus said there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. Who are you when no one is watching? Another message from Lifeline Productions, located on the web at lifelinepro.com. 